Hi, I'm Ella Matsushi and this is the fourth video of how to ETH 101. And in this video I will be talking about how it is like to study at ETH as a master's student. As usual, there are two semesters at Eha. One starts from September last till December. The other one starts from February till June. But actually, this may be different. You may not have holidays in between. This is due to the examination calendar of ETH. Let's start with the lectures. For me, they were different than what I had in Turkey for my bachelor's at university because we were mostly having our lectures on a whiteboard and professor was writing down the things and then we were taking notes and we were solving problems all together. But here at ETH, all the lecture material is on slides and you have them beforehand, before coming to class so that you can study them. There are sometimes small questions on those slides which the answer is not given previously but it is given in the lectures you have some time to solve it before professor shows you the answer or you have this assignment hours where there's an assignment given and you have to solve them and at the end the assistants will solve you the whole assignment. For me what was um, difficult is that on slide based lectures, even though I studied them before coming to the class, it was not easy to keep up with everything because you're seeing something and then the professor is explaining it in detail. You're starting to write the additional thing that the professor said and then they keep on going on the lecture but you're still writing something so you're trying to also listen what is going on after that sentence but if that was a long sentence People who are used to take lectures by slides, I think this skill is already developed so it was easy for most of the people and actually most of the people were bringing their laptops or tablets or laptops that has touch screens. Everybody seemed to me like they are already able to keep up with the pace, but not me. <laughs> For me it was a bit difficult, but still it was okay. Also some lectures are video recorded, so when you get to home you can rewatch them over and over and over again, stop it where you want to take notes and then continue. I mean it takes much more time, but if you want to learn this is what you're doing, right? <laughs> and then how you get your grades. This was also different for me because in my university we were always getting grades bit by bit. We had thousands of assignments, quizzes, reports, projects and midterms and finals but here most of the lectures has only final examination some of them also have midterm but most of them have the policy of if your final is higher than the midterm then you got just the final examination grade if not they are combined in a way there are different applications on all different lectures I'm not saying that there are not lectures that doesn't have assignments affecting your grade. There are also such lectures. Also there are lectures that count midterms and finals together. But most of them have final examinations. And these finals may be in end of semester, so meaning at December or June. But these may be also in the season examination period too, which is happening in February and August, September. And if you're really unlucky, you may have only weekend in between your last final and the beginning of the next semester. This is not impossible, this is possible. Meaning that you have a semester starting from September till mid-December and just before Christmas, but you have examinations on February, so you study in the time between, and then you get your final examinations and you may have one exam on the last day of the examination period and then after weekends you will be starting the next semester. This is also a case for the summer. Even the semester ends in June, you may have finals and this is mostly the case on uh, August and the beginning of September so that you study in whole summer period. <laughs> But if you study day by day, kind of make practice during the summer, 
you may not need to study. This is also possible. I'm not saying that it's impossible. This is also possible. You may have holidays. <laughs> Dark days. And another thing is that you need to say hi to do oral exams. This is not the case for teachers that has thousands of students. Yes, this is also possible. For example, in my year, machine learning course had 1,500 students. They took three big lecture halls and in one of them you could see the lecturers in person but in the two other you were just seeing the video recording in real time and this was not even enough so that most of the students was still watching the lectures after they are recorded at their home so <laughs> if this is not a crowded course you are most likely going to get oral exam you are basically asked by anything anything that had been taught in the lecture it depends from lecture to lecture this may last for 25 minutes to 50 minutes it really depends on the lecturer and they keep asking you questions but the nice thing is all the professors are so far i know that they were so nice that whenever you're so excited and and this was the case for me they were helping you out like do you think that does this term makes you remember something kind of hints for you to let you to the answer sometimes you're completely lost which happened to me <laughs> once but this may happen i even forgot my own name <laughs> i was so excited i don't know why but it, it happens but you get used to it by time and if you ask me if eth was hard i guess i would say not too hard because I mean, all the examinations that I had, even though I wasn't fast enough to write down everything that I know or fast enough to calculate the uh, everything that I had in my mind, what is asked to you is what had been taught. So if you learned it, you can basically do it. Because the examination time is also limited, they're not asking you something that you need to think over for a really long time. If they are going to do such a thing, they're giving take-home examinations instead. So, for example, I had one course that I had one week to solve the midterm and the final. And it was really hard and even though you have all the sources available, you were kind of thinking about what to do because the examination was like a real life scenario where with the information that you learned as an engineer you can apply it to the problem that you're seeing so it's not something that you can find on the internet yeah you, see, you can solve this like that no you really have to think about it worked on it and come up with the results and i really like that approach the best i guess because at the end you gain also a kind of practical experience of how to approach a real life problem with the theory that you learned in the lecture and you don't have the pressure of time and you are not scared of forgetting something including your name I think that was the best kind of examination method that I've had in my whole student life Thank you! I said most of the courses only has finals this doesn't mean that they don't have assignments they give you assignments but they are all volunteer, you are not graded by them, so you may want to solve them, you don't want to solve them, it's really up to you. So it's basically for you to study. You may have all your lectures, video recorded, so you may not even go to the lectures because nobody's taking care of whether you get into the class or not. You are your own boss in this. <laughs> Also what is different from my bachelor in Turkey is that the campus is not a closed area. It is open to public, specifically main campus. It's, I mean, even though I say campus, it's just kind of buildings next to each other in the middle of the city center. Anyone could enter these buildings, enter any lecture and get that lecture theoretically and i guess this is happening and it is nice and it makes you feel safe even though in all <laughs> lecture halls there is this 
emergency call phone if some mass shooting happened. I hope this will never be the case. <laughs> you may ask, how should I study? What should be my method while studying at ETH? Study day by day, take practical good notes and actually learn everything, every single detail that I've been taught to you in the class. I guess I can say this. <laughs> as a tip. Thinking about it, in masters I only took classes for one year, so the time that I found the great method to be able to have a nice oral exams and be able to be fast enough to solve the examinations that includes a lot of calculation, I was kind of done with the courses. <laughs> in that sense, maybe I may not be the best source of advice in this what is the best method to be successful at ETH. But as I told you, if you understand what the lecture is about, you will get the maximum grade. <laughs> Talking about grades, the grading system is from 0 to 6, I guess, or maybe 1 to 6. The lower grades that I don't know because 4 is the passing grade. You can get grades lower than 4, but that will mean you didn't pass and you fail. Uh, 4 is the lowest uh, that you can pass and 6 is the most grade that you can take. And the increments are 0.25. It is hard to get 6 but not impossible. But in oral exams I would say it's much easier to get 6 than the written exams. Because if you answer the questions that professor asked to you in the oral exam confidently, without hesitation, in the oral exams it doesn't need to be really you gave the answer right away, the question asks, like you can get six. Even the professor helped you to kind of get to the answer by yourself. What they're really trying to do is that, okay, if you have this information, and now you may not remember it, I understand it, so let me help you. And if you remember it, you can explain it nicely, then you know the course, you understand what I thought to you, so you deserve six. Yay! <laughs> Some courses have limited quota, so you should be fast enough to get a place in that lecture that you really want. If you cannot get it, you are in the waiting list and you may not get the course. And in the first semester, you can enroll to the TH during summer before the semester starts so that you will be able to get the courses when the registration is open. However, if you are coming from another country and you have not the luxury of coming to Zurich, completing your enrollment and then go back to your country and come back for the first day of the semester, you may be kind of a bit late to have a place in the limited quota lectures. This may happen, unfortunately. This happened to me. <laughs> but I mean, you can always get these cores on the next semester if this lecture is open for each semester or maybe the next year if your program allows you to. Other than that, a nice thing, <laughs> which I never had, after each lecture, students are clapping or oh, how can I say, hitting on the uh, desks to say thank you to the professor. This was weird for me, but then I got used to it. I don't know, this is a nice way to say thank you to the lecturer, I guess. Of course, I'm talking about non-corona times, because I think I never got online courses, because during pandemic I was doing my thesis, so I didn't get the online classes. And apart from lectures, what you can do is that you can have volunteer projects in the labs or you can enter this student association. There are all the societies, clubs that you can ever think of and there are also some technical clubs like Formula Student or Human Aid Robot One, Rocket One, all, the, all sort of things that you can imagine. For example, you can take courses from dance club, you can enter pub quizzes, you can go to game nights and also the most popular society they fly you with the one free beer and coffee every day <laughs> this is also a nice tip we even have a nap room that you can go and sleep for an hour two hour i think i had my best sleep in the nap room in my entire life that was nice. My one day at ETH video, and I show a picture of the nap room there. There are big gyms in both campuses. Definitely, there's always a course going on. It can be Condi, it can be Step, it can be Super Condi, where there is a trainer in the middle and
when everybody else is just around this person and repeating the moments. But besides those, you can always go to normal gym uh, equipment and work out. For this, you're actually paying money and this is obligatory. So you cannot say that, no, I'm going not, not going to use it, so I'm not going to pay it. But these gyms are really good and the price that you're paying per semester is actually really low compared to the any other gym around Zurich. And it's really nice that you just leave a lecture and then you have an empty spot in between, so you just enter the gym do some sports, go out and continue your lectures and it's like for clubs I wasn't able to get an actor role. I was most in the passive member part of it so that I was just attending the events. <laughs> but I really wish that I had the time for entering those Formula Student or the Rocket groups. But they also need a lot of time and effort. With all the courses that you're taking, you may not have the energy to devote to those clubs next to the lecture. There are also students uh, who have the budget to prolong their studies so that if, for example, your uh, study program is minimum two years, they do it in three years and in one year they can also spend their time to those projects also by taking less courses per semester. If I had the opportunity, I really would like to do it. Oh, I couldn't. But yeah, <laughs> overall it was a nice experience for me. For master thesis, what you're doing is that there's lots of master thesis projects in all the labs. You may just select one of those and wrote to the responsible person. Either you will be selected to do this thesis or you will look for another one. But this doesn't mean that you cannot propose your own. But this doesn't happen so frequently, let's say. You're mostly working with the PhD student or the postdoc that gave you the thesis in the first place. Professors are more in the second level. You're not seeing them frequently. Even PhD students are not seeing them so frequently. I think this one is for really crowded labs. If it is a rather small one, probably you're seeing the professor very frequently. But in the ones that I know, they, which are so big, even PhD students are like more than 40 people. And think about if professor had to give one hour per PhD student, then almost your all hour on the weekdays is just over. So that's why in uh, crowded uh, labs, you may not see the uh, professor frequently. Even this person is your tutor. So you should know this. Tutors in the master programs, they are not going to be with you all the time. If they would like to give their time, this also changes from professor to professor. You may see them in the beginning of the semester to discuss about which courses you want to take. But otherwise, I also heard the cases that my friends were not able to talk with their tutors because they were so busy. I hope this will not be the case for you. <laughs> But this may also happen, so don't think that you will be seeing the professor uh, very frequently. As I told you in the first video, in Switzerland, master is seemed like the continuation of the bachelor. You're kind of still taking your lecture. So I guess this was all. If I didn't forget anything, if you have any other questions, you may write them on the comments below or if you are an ETH student and you want to add something or say no this is not the case more than welcome this was just my experience it may be different for others and I am making this video for the people who are not taking education at ETH already and would like to learn about ETH so please write them to the comments at, so that we can help people who have questions thank you very much and see you on the next video